So uh, I'm uh, Fred Simon from uh, JFrog uh, Artifactory, and uh, as you saw this morning, and uh, we're just uh, going to announce a little bit uh, later on a big announcement, uh, we uh, start to support so the Jenkins and the Jenkins CI community by offering the um, uh, repository manager for all the uh, Jenkins itself and all the plugin development. Uh, for the moment, it's uh, mainly used for uh, development, so for resolution and uh, for uh, snapshot builds. It's going to be soon used for uh, release and uh, release environment. So, um, another thing that is uh, really important is that uh, uh, the Artifactory plugin, which is part so, of the, the Jenkins plugin and that you can download, is uh, quite a successful plugin and is uh, highly used. Uh, more and more to uh, really control uh, your uh, continuous deployment, delivery, continuous integration flow. So there is a lot of talk here about uh, continuous delivery, which is different from continuous deployment, which is different from continuous integration. So basically you have a lot of CDI, CDD, and all this kind of stuff. Uh, but at the end of the day, inside uh, JFrog, we are... Um, um, really developing most of our stuff by uh, using our own dog food. And uh, for the year and a half now, um, I'm basically the DevOps of JFrog and the manager of the Artifactory Online and the Artifactory Online uh, operation of uh, Artifactory. Okay? Um, and for two years, we have really a lot of success with this online factor, uh, Artifactory Online. We have repo.springsource.org, so all Spring Source, everything that is released with Spring Source, everything that is going out there is using the full-blown uh, Gradle Artifactory JFrog plugin, Maven, uh, Maven 3 uh, uh, JFrog plugin, and the Artifactory Online uh, environment for distributing and releasing uh, all the Spring Source repo. We have, of course, Gradle, Grails, and uh, now Jenkins CI. We have also Scala, TypeSafe, Scala SBT. So all those uh, big, big repositories are uh, on our platform, and we are uh, today uh, delivering more than 15 million requests per week, so which is quite, uh, quite a lot. And it's a lot of fun to actually, as, as an architect, to go back to, to the hardware and set up the environment. So to be able to support the load that is growing uh, every day is really a lot of fun. So we created this plugin, and we are using this plugin to do our own continuous deployment. Okay, on our cloud architecture, we have versions that are updated a lot more often than uh, the artifactory that you can download and install by yourself uh, on your own uh, premises. Um, so, one, uh, first of all, I want to do a, a small survey. Uh, how many of you are using Nexus? Good. How many of you are using a... Uh, the version control or the file system to store their binaries. Okay, it's still quite, quite a bit. Uh, how many of you are not using anything like IV, Gradle, Maven, and just pure uh, Ant and manage their own dependency by yourself? Okay, so it's reducing a, a lot more and a lot more. So for all the Nexus users here, you will see, and uh, I hope you will... Uh, uh, you will understand your mistake by the end of this demo. Uh, and for uh, all the others, the main thing that is important, by the way, uh, Nexus is working good, but the main uh, preaching that we are doing out there is to use a binary repository manager. Okay? Today you have a lot, a lot of small modules, a lot of things that are built, and they need to be built in small pieces. You need to be able to distribute them, share them, and uh, you need to have a tool that is managing the binary, distributing the binary, and uh, delivering them to the developer and delivering them to the production and to the deployment. So, um, here is a small demo which is using Gradle, sorry for, for Maven, but, uh, and which is here, so my uh, Jenkins environment, um, which is uh, uh, installed with the Artifactory plugin. So, it's a uh, multi-project uh, Gradle example, 
and uh, it's using so the Gradle plugin. What's really, really important and the big difference between Gradle and anything else is that with the Gradle plugin, since it's groovy, you can configure the actual Jenkins environment and Jenkins plugin inside Gradle itself, inside the groovy itself. So there is um, a nice UI here when you go to the configure about configuring the Gradle plugin, the Artifactory plugin for, for Gradle. Uh, here, Artifactory configuration. Uh, but uh, basically, you can do a lot of those parameters in Groovy, dynamically, depending of where you are or depending of all kind of environment inside the Gradle script itself. One main important point here, which for Maven that are used to have a repository declaration in their POM or distribution management, mainly for doing the Maven deploy correctly or SCM declaration, you are declaring where is your repository manager, where are your binary coming from, and where will be published your binary inside Jenkins, okay? It's a critical point. Managing where the things are gonna build and where the things are gonna end up and where they're gonna flow to do it inside your build environment with the version control system, with the branching and tagging of your version control system, very, very rapidly, basically doesn't make a sense and gets in the way. Okay, if you want to rebuild a branch that you created three months ago, which has distribution management and URL of things that doesn't exist anymore, you have high, high chance that you actually need to change your POM XML, need to change your Maven to basically being able to rebuild those kind of things. So here in a, in a, a Gradle plugin, what's nice is that what you provide here is gonna override what is by default inside your Gradle script. And so you can have the better of both worlds to have a pure Gradle environment where the URL is set up for the developer and a CI environment which is gonna set up for this specific job which is a specific branch. I want my artifact to go to a specific local repository which is not gonna pollute the developers, all this kind of uh, configuration. We had it, so this is a new version which is gonna go out in 2.6 in the coming weeks. An ability also here to add staging configuration here. So the staging configuration is basically allowing you to write some Gradle scripts inside Artifactory, I'm gonna show you a piece of it, that will allow you to control the way you want to do your release mechanism and the way you want to release this job. Um, a bunch of extra information, as you can see, yeah, we have also generic Artifactory, so if you are using Ant or C, C++, or anything, you have also generic Artifactory integration that will allow you to capture all what's going on inside this build and put it inside Artifactory, everything that is published and everything that was used and all the development environment. And so uh, Ant IV, Gradle and uh, Maven should be below. Um, so for the Gradle environment, we are doing what is called the capture and publish build info. If you want to play with your build graph, okay, this is really important when you do uh, a continuous deployment and continuous integration, you need to know when there is a third party dependency that actually changed from one version to another and all this kind of, of information. If you are doing this analysis from your POM XML, there is 100% chance that at some point it will give you the wrong answer. Okay, for all kind of reason, depending on wh who is the root build, uh, all kind of uh, version environment. Here what we are doing is that we are actually capturing the jar that was really used when Jenkins did the build, when the build really happened, okay? This is the actual dependency that happened and we are keeping those dependency by uh, checksum and so we are making sure that even if someone after is changing on the same log4j 1.4, 11, another jar which doesn't match the checksum, we're gonna visualize and we're gonna see it here, okay? We can run license check which requires the Artery Factory Pro, so we have all the information about uh, what's going on in your third party dependency list and we can give you immediately a new uh, GPL license is creeping in as soon as the developer is committing a new dependency declaration. Uh, we can do a lot, lot more also uh, publish, so publishing all the artifacts to Artifactory so, and with all kind of uh, filtering pattern and deployment properties which is basically metadata that is added to all the artifacts that will be published by this specific job with dynamic properties, okay, without adding it to your manifest MF or all these kind of things. Usually this is what people are doing to add property inside the jar or the manifest to have traceability. Here you can add this 
on top of your binary repository manager. So you can tag and do the, all the metadata tagging dynamically during the build on top of your jar inside Artifactory. And the release management here that will allow you basically to do a, a direct Git release uh, from Jenkins and do the link between the, uh, creating a Git release, creating, uh, so usually people are using the M2 release plugin, for example, which is doing three builds and two different commits and all these kind of things. Here it's one single build, we change all the prom XML, all the Gradle property that are needed and all these things, do one build, one publish, one tag. Okay, very streamlined, uh, very concise, and keep the traceability of all the things together. And the Maven 3 here, Artifactory integration. So if I go to uh, the build number 20 here, which is my uh, latest build, so you can see it's a clean uh, download. So it's uh, downloading here from a repo demo, which is himself here. You can see the URL. Okay, it's uh, Gen Artifactory and Jenkins are deployed on the same Tomcat here. So it's uh, downloading from the, the repo demo. And what's important is that it's deploying artifact here, artifact to republish, only at the end of the full multi-build, okay? One of the main issues with Maven deploy is that it's deploying module by module, okay? With Gradle, you can uh, configure it a little bit better, but by default, also in Gradle, it's publishing module by module, which means that if you have a test that fail on uh, the uh, module number uh, five in your build uh, reactor list, basically, you have a half-deployed environment on your binary repository manager. Okay. So here we aggregate all the information and we deploy. It. One important thing also here is that we deploy knowing that it's Artifactory on the other side. Okay. When Maven is deploying, he, know, he thinks that it's something stupid on the other side. It's a stupid file server. Okay. So he's doing all the Maven metadata calculation, all the checksum calculation, and all these kind of things. Okay. Here, whenever we are sending one single file to Artifactory, we are not telling him what is the new build number Artifactory is going to calculate. We are not telling him what is the checksum for each one of them. It's actually properties that are sent during the put request, and Artifactory will answer immediately a 409 if there is a checksum mistake. So you get checksum error on deploy in your build, okay? Something that in Maven you never get. You get checksum error on the client side that everybody ignores because anyway there is plenty of checksum error on repo one anyway. So one main thing, and at the end here, we are publishing the API build info, which is basically publishing to Artifactory all the information about everything that happened in this build. So how it's going to look like, so this is basically how Artifactory looks like. It's beautiful. <laughs> so this is the main thing that I want to say about Artifactory, all these kind of things. For most of the tool and most of the environment and most of the system, this is how Artifactory looks like. It's a file system server, but it's served by Artifactory, okay? What does it mean? It means that here you have all the security control, depending on who is going in. You have also all the property filtering. If you want to filter and get only files that are suitable for production, you can put in the URL the filter about the production, and you will see, and the tool will not think twice about it. It will see just files that are suitable for production, okay? So it's a simple... Uh, browsable um, uh, commons I.O. here with, and you have the checksums here, for example, which are not actual files, which are just the checksums that are kept in the database of Artifactory. So one big, big complaint that we have about Artifactory and Nexus is the fact that Artifactory is using a database and Nexus is using the pure file system, okay? Frankly, when I'm thinking about it, it really uh, reminds me the, the days of CVS. I remember having some energy to put into customers to tell them you need a good version control system. There is the CVS. And people felt really, really comfortable with CVS because they can see their file inside the, bind, inside the database of CVS. They can see the actual file. And when they were doing a branching, all the files were actually copied inside CVS. So it gives them confidence that the CVS was not something completely crazy. It was just adding more file around their own file and version control system. Okay? But Today, nobody wants to look at a version control system database, okay? When you get a Git and you do a Git clone bare bone and you get only the Git database, nobody is looking at the object file and at the checksum files. And everybody trusts Git to get those checksum files and create the version control system out of it. If you want to have 
chip copy, chip branching, uh, merge, and all kind of tagging capability, not to have a database is basically almost impossible. They, in Nexus, so what they do is that they keep adding XML file or all kind of JSON file on the side and try to keep the sync between the jar files and the thing. Every time they need to copy, there is actual copy on the file system that is going on. Here, for example, we are highly used in LinkedIn. This is how they do their continuous deployment in LinkedIn. So they deploy the war multiple times a day using Artifactory. It's six gigabytes of war file, all the LinkedIn war, okay? If they had to copy those six gigabytes between the development, the integration test, the, they have QA, and after they have pre-prod and then prod, okay, they would just keep the machine doing six gigabytes of copy from one place to another. When they use Artifactory, it's just pointer arithmetic. You just copy the gigabyte and the checksum storage, and you have a database in the front. Okay? So I know it makes a lot of you scary about the fact that you don't see your jar file and you don't see your binary anymore. You can set up the automatic backup like they have now for Git or whatever. But, I mean, um, get over it. <laughs> so, if I go here, back to here, I have the nice uh, little Artifactory logo that appear in a lot of different places. And you can see that for a lot of the successful build here, I can go directly here to the build info inside Artifactory. So I'm logged in here as Fred. And so you have what we call here the general build info. Who actually build deal, which Gradle version, how long it took, and I have the link back to Jenkins. What does it mean is that, by the way, the, the plugin that is doing all this aggregation and uh, all this information about capturing the information about the build and the jar that are used and the, and the dependency that are used and the dependency that are produced is called the build info. It's a pure Apache V2 open source on our GitHub repository. It's actually used by other people in terms of Python for other environment. So you are highly welcome uh, to fork it on GitHub and do whatever you want with it. But this is a standard pure JSON object which contain all the property about this build info, the version, the started, and the license and the list of modules that were produced and the list for each one of them of dependencies. Okay, so this is a pure JSON object that you can manipulate by yourself and you have the source code to manipulate it. You can, of course, visualize it in a lot nicer way inside Artifactory. Here is the list of module of this multi-module and for each one of them here, you have the list of artifacts and where they are located here, the time was to locate them in the different places inside Artifactory, okay? The IV file, the WAR file and, and the JAR and the list of dependency with the scope, which is here, the, the, Gradle, uh, the, the Gradle scope, the, and where it is inside Artifactory, okay? So we have the full graph of dependency of what is actually produced and what is actually used inside Artifactory. What it enables you is to do bulk operation on all the produced and published artifacts, okay? So what you can do here, it's at the bottom, you can take all the published artifacts and all the dependency depending on the scope, aggregate them in a bulk of list of jars and do stuff with them, okay? So here I'm gonna take all the uh, compile runtime. I don't need the test and the test compile because I want to put it uh, to QA. I can do a save here, which will do a save search result. And here you can see that it aggregated 42 artifact count from all kinds of different repository and I can manipulate them here as a bulk operation. Okay, so what you see here, you can do it from the UI, but of course, the main important thing is that you should be able to do it from the com from a curl and from the REST API. Everything that you do here is fully REST API loaded and it's fully accessible from the pure REST API and so you can script it from Jenkins, okay, to do the promotion and to do the publication of the list of artifacts and their dependencies. Um, uh, doo -doo -doo. I, uh, yeah, one more thing that uh, I, I want to show you here is, I'm going to go back. If I go so to, uh, to my Java Dog jar, I do show in tree. So this is the UI of, uh, of uh, Artifactory. Um, so you can see all the different version here. It's uh, with the, the Gradle layout, okay? The general information, uh, how to do the, the build tool. And the main thing that I wanted to show you is the metadata. So you have here, inside, on the top of the jar itself, okay, 
the actual build name, where it came from inside Jenkins, which build number, which VCS revision, which is the Git uh, commit. So you have full traceability of your jar, okay? And you can navigate here inside Artifactory, inside the jar itself, and have a point of view on, on the different things. So here it's the Java doc. One more thing that is, and the demo Gradle, I don't know if you remember, I put as a dynamic property inside the Jenkins configuration, demo Gradle. You can add here, of course, in the metadata, you can add your own uh, list of properties of your own. Uh, it's uh, OS uh, Linux, uh, Fedora, uh, let's say CentOS, okay? So you can add your own list of properties and it's filterable, it's searchable, and it's usable by the different build and the different build and promotion environment. One main thing that uh, I, one thinks also is that you can actually download also artifacts that are inside jar or zip files, okay, inside Artifactory. It's highly useful for Javadoc uh, manipulation. Here you have a pure Javadoc version, and if you click here on the download, you can see that you have directly uh, the Javadoc browsable, which is directly inside Artifactory, so you don't have to take your Javadoc and explode it into some kind of uh, web server of web environment, and you have the Javadoc for each single version, even for snapshot version, if you do the build with the good Javadoc. By the way, I really like the new looking of the Javadoc 7. <laughs> ah, okay. Uh, so, yeah, the last thing that I wanted to show you is that, uh, so we did a lot, a lot of time, we did this release promotion and this release mechanism that needed you to do a new build to actually create the release because in Gradle, Maven, in Ivy and all this environment to actually create the Ivy XML or the POM XML or the, the Gradle build that will create the POM XML for a release, okay, is uh, always an extra build step. So we got a lot, a lot of requests of actually doing a snapshot to release, okay. How can I take any snapshot that was already built by Jenkins and make it a release? Okay, so we said there is so many ways to do it, there is no way to make it a button or to make it a feature. So what we have is that we added a user plugin. So it's a pure groovy scripting inside Artifactory that lets you play with all the information that you saw right now, all the artifacts, all the build info and all the object in a groovy way and let you manipulate. So here is the piece of code, for example, which is generate and deploy a release IV file out of an IV file which is for a snapshot version. So there is, for example, release IV dependency, find all the dependencies that are for me and replace it with my uh, actual uh, release version and replace inside the IV and redeploy this IV file inside Artifactory, okay? So what we find out is that actually transforming a snapshot to a release has nothing to do with the actual build. Doing the recompilation of your Java class to classes to jar doesn't make any much of a sense, okay? What you want to do is really playing with the name of the file, with a bunch of properties in the file, and with the dependency management. This is something that you can do directly now inside Artifactory, and this snapshot to release is directly uh, accessible and executable from here, a curl promotion, for example, where here, demo, Artifactory, plugin, snapshot to release, which is the name of the plugin, Groovy plugin that I created. The name of my build, Gradle to dollar $1 is the build number, and the name of where I want to put it, the target repository, which is the local repository where I want to put my releases. Okay? So I, I, I can execute it, but they want me to, let's see if I can do it. Uh, which one you want, the number 18 or 19? I need 19. Uh, boom, we did a bit. <laughs> what is the error? Um, so, item Gradle release does not exist. Ah, I, I, okay. Okay. I deleted my, uh, I, I released multiple times the same one, so it, uh, it actually overrides the, the Java doc that we're just looking at. Uh, 